Earth Systems 3209. Earth Materials Unit 3. Reference for this presentation can be found in the textbook in Chapters 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 6, Chapter 7, and Appendix A and B in the Curriculum Guide. Unit 3, Topic 3.4. This presentation will look at igneous classification charts and how an igneous classification chart are used to classify igneous rocks. We will focus on identifying the eight rock forming minerals and describing the mineralogy associated with common igneous rocks and relate to igneous composition and texture. When looking at the rock forming minerals, all igneous rocks originally solidified from magma or lava. That is, they form from a once molten material. Igneous rocks form from eight minerals that are called the rock forming minerals. These are olivine, proxene, amphibole, and biotite. Four of these minerals make up the composition known as mafic. The fifth rock forming mineral would be plagioclase feldspar, orthoclase feldspar, muscovite mica, and quartz. These minerals make up the composition known as felsic composition. Mafic composition are generally dark in color, whereas felsic minerals are generally light in color. The type of igneous rock formed depends on the environment in which it crystallizes. There are mainly two environments in which igneous rocks can crystallize. First one is called a volcanic environment. This environment is found at or near the Earth's surface where molten rock cools very quickly, which results in very small crystals being formed. The second environment would be a plutonic environment. In a plutonic environment, molten rock cools beneath the Earth's surface, which results in a longer time of cooling, which will further result in larger, more uniform sized crystals. These crystals can be seen with the ionated lie in a hand sample. For references, on igneous rocks, we can refer to our textbook on pages 61 to 73. When we look at the different types of igneous rock, one such volcanic igneous rock is rhyolite. Rhyolite is mainly composed of felsic minerals, including quartz and orthoclase felspar. They are generally light in color and they generally have less than 15% dark minerals. Their crystals are microscopic and they cannot be seen with the ani lie. Therefore, rhyolite would have a fine texture. If you look at the classification chart to the right, we can see that rhyolite outlined here in blue generally falls you must call a felsic composition. So all the minerals that are located to the left of the dark line that's below the little um, bracket I just drew in are located within rhyolite. Rhyolite will contain quartz, it will contain potassium felspar, sodium rich plagioclase felspar, can contain biotite or muscovite and it can contain some hornblende. But generally these lower minerals, the biotite and the hornblende, are in lower percentages, less than 15%. So this will be the composition of the volcanic rock rhyolite. But if we look below, we would should note at this point, granite, which is a plutonic rock, would have the exact same composition as rhyolite. The only difference is it forms in a plutonic environment, which is inside the Earth. 
second rock that we will look at is another rock called andesite. Andesite is more of an intermediate composition and contains the minerals amphibole and plagioclase feldspar. It is medium colored, therefore it can contain up to 40% dark minerals. And again, it is microscopic crystalline structure, therefore we cannot see the minerals with their unneeded eye, and it hence it has a fine texture. If we look at the intermediate composition, the intermediate composition can be found within the two lines that I've drawn here. So any minerals that are located beneath this bracket can be found in andesite. So we can have a little quartz, you can have a little potassium feldspar. We generally see a lot, a high percentage of plagioclase feldspar, a small percentage of micas, biotite and muscovite mica, and we have a high percentage of hornblende. A little on the right side of this field, we can also find proxene in andesites. The third volcanic rock that we look at is a rock called basalt. Basalt is primarily a mafic igneous rock and it can be composed of minerals pyroxene and plagioclase feldspar. It's generally dark in color, generally has greater than 40% dark minerals, and again, it has a microscopic crystalline structure. Therefore, again, you cannot see the minerals with the unneeded eye, and it results, it has a fine texture. If we look at the mafic field, the mafic field is found more to the right side of our composition chart between the black lines here. We can see that basalt will contain a high percentage of calcium rich plagioclase feldspar. It can contain a smaller percentage of hornblende and it contains a higher percentage of proxy. And it can also contain a medium to moderate percentage of a mineral called olivine. So these are the primary minerals that we find in mafic rocks, basalt. It should be noted at this point that the rock gabbro also contains the same minerals, but it forms in a different environment, which is a plutonic environment beneath the Earth's surface. So therefore, gabbro would have the exact same mineral, mineral composition, but you would be able to see these minerals with the ionate lie. When we move to our plutonic rocks, these are rocks that form within the Earth. The first rock we look at is gabbro. Gabbro has the exact same composition as basalt, but it forms in a different environment, which is a plutonic environment. It will mainly be consist of proxene and plagioclase feldspar. It can have greater than 40% dark minerals, but the difference in this case it would have visible crystals. Therefore, we can see the mineral crystals in plutonic rocks. So therefore, we classify it with a coarse texture. So again, if you look at the classification chart to the right, gabbro would contain a high percentage of calcium-rich plasclase feldspar, a lower percentage of hornblende, a high percentage of proxene, and a moderate percentage of olivine. So in conclusion, gabbro will consist of four of these minerals, and it also has the same composition as basalt, but it forms in a plutonic environment. So it should be noted that both basalt and gabbro can have mafic compositions, but they have different textures. The next, the next igneous rock we look at is diorite. Diorite is an intermediate composition rock. It mainly consists of amphibole and plasclase feldspar. It has a medium color, can generally has less than 40% dark minerals. And again, because it forms in a plutonic environment, we do see visible crystals. 
therefore it has a coarse texture. So if we draw lines representing the intermediate field on our classification chart, we see that diorite, which is a plutonic rock, can have a small percentage of quartz, can have a very small percentage of earth glaze feldspar, a high percentage of plage glaze feldspar. It can contain some mica, spiotite muscovite mica, has a higher percentage of formblend, affable, and it also can contain a percentage of proxy. It should be noted here that diorite has the same composition as andesite, but it just forms in a different environment. So both andesite and diorite are intermediate rocks with different textures. And the last rock type that we will look at is called granite. And granite is the main rock that makes up the continental crust. Granite has a high percentage of quartz and earth glaze feldspar. These minerals are generally light in color, and the rock itself will contain less than 15% dark minerals. So we can notice that if we look at the rock here to the left, the darker minerals are in a very low percentage, generally less than 15%. But when we look at granite, we will also notice because it forms in a plutonic environment where the cooling rate is slow, the crystals have a lot of time to grow and we can actually see visible crystals. And for that reason, granite will have a coarse texture. So if we draw in our lines to represent the felsic field, we'll notice that granite can contain quartz, can contain potassium feldspar, sodium rich plastic glaze feldspar, your micas, biotite muscovite mica, and also a small percentage of horn plan amphibole. So again, it should be noted at this point that granite has the same composition as the rock rhyolite, but the only difference is its texture. Granite would have coarse grain crystals whereas rhyolite would have a fine texture. So in comparison, if we look at the classification chart of igneous rocks, a general classification scheme based on chemical composition and texture can be seen in this chart below. The compositions in, the ig in igneous rocks are generally felsic, which we can also refer to as granitic, because granite, granite would be the most common felsic rock. Could be intermediate, which we could also refer to it as andesitic, because andesite would be the most common intermediate rock. And mafic. And we can also refer to mafic as basaltic, because basalt is the most common mafic rock. So these are three different compositions that comprise most of your igneous rocks. The main minerals found, quartz, earth glaze feldspar, are the most common minerals found in felsic rocks, and these are generally light in color. Generally light in color. We have amphibole and also plage glaze feldspar found in andesite rocks, and this is a mix of light and dark. So it gives you an intermediate color. And in mafic rocks, we see peroxine, plasclase feldspar. And on the mafic, ultramafic side of this composition, we can also find olivine. And these rocks are generally dark in color. So felsic composition would be light in color, intermediate composition, medium moderate color, and mafic are characterized by dark colored minerals. When we get into texture, in the classification chart, we see that each of the different compositions of igneous rocks can have different textures. And the textures depend on the crystallization environment. For example, once we see a coarse grain rock, coarse grain rocks generally 
form in a plutonic environment. In comparison, your fine grain rocks generally form in a volcanic environment. So granite and rhyolite would have the same composition. Both are self-seeking composition. But they form in different environments. Therefore, granite would be coarse-grained, whereas rhyolite would be fine-grained. If we look at the two equivalent rocks for intermediate composition, we have diorite and andesite. Again, diorite would form in a plutonic environment, so it would be coarse-grained. And andesite would form in a volcanic environment, and therefore would be fine-grained. In a mafic environment, or a mafic composition, we find gabbro forming in a plutonic environment, being coarse-grained, and basalt forming in a volcanic environment, being fine-grained. Basalt and gabbro would have the same composition, which would be mafic. Diorite and andesite would have the same composition, which would be intermediate. Granite and rhyolite would have the same composition and would be felsic. The only difference between these pairs of rocks would be their texture, because they form in different environments. Two other textures that are common would be a vesicular texture and a glassy texture. These textures are special textures that only form in certain environments. For example, a vesicular texture would form in a volcanic environment where gas escapes from the lava producing a frothy uh, material on top, which solidifies into a solid rock with a lot of uh, gas bubbles. So therefore, the gas bubbles are called vesicles, and this would give a vesicular texture. So pumice would have a vesicular frothy texture that's found in felsic igneous rocks, and whereas scoria would have a frothy gas bubble texture found in a mafic igneous rock. And the other classification for texture would be glassy. Once you have felsic igneous rocks or felsic igneous magma coming in contact with a cold surface, no crystals can form and the resulting rock will be obsidian. And obsidian is called volcanic glass and it is just solid compact glass. Let's look at an overview of our composition. When we look at rock forming minerals, we generally have eight rock forming minerals. And eight of these rock forming minerals are seen in our chart here to the left. We have number one, potassium feldspar, two, quartz, three, plastic glaze feldspar, four, micas, both biotite and muscovite mica. Amphibole, seven, proxy, and eight would be olivine. The compositions that we see in these igneous rocks are generally felsic, which would be your light colored minerals found on the left side of the diagram. We have intermediate, which has a medium texture or medium uh, color which would be found in the middle of your diagram. And we have mafic composition, which would be found to the right of your diagram. Once we look at the, uh, the mantle, the mantle is made up of ultramafic rock. And ultramafic rock is not really looked at in this course. But it's worth noting that ultramafic rocks would only contain primarily two minerals. And these two minerals are found on the right side of your diagram, and those would be proxene and olivine. Two, two rocks that make up are made up of proxene and olivine would be pritatite, which is the rock that makes up the mantle, the primary rock making up the mantle, and another rock called comatitite. If the magma erupts straight from the mantle to the surface, it would form a rock, an igneous rock, rich in proxy and olivine, and this rock would be called comatitite. And the environments in which igneous rocks form 
would be a plutonic environment, which forms inside the Earth, versus a volcanic environment, which forms on the surface of the Earth. And if we look to our diagram here, we see our intrusive plutonic environment, are represented by the rocks on the top. And our extrusive volcanic environment will be represented by the rocks on the bottom of the classification chart. This igneous classification chart can be used to answer several questions on exams in relation to the classification of igneous rocks. Because classification of igneous rocks are generally done according to the composition, which is found across the top, and also by the texture, which is defined by the environment, intrusive versus extrusive. So make sure that you're familiar with this classification chart when it comes to answering questions on igneous rocks. Some common questions that could be asked on public exams. Um, first one, what minerals would be found in an average composition of granite or an average composition of basalt? So if we're going to look at an average, we would come down through the felsic field halfway down. And halfway in the field, if we draw a line straight down through, whatever fields that line intersects with, those are the minerals that you would find in the composition of that rock type. For example, granite would contain potassium feldspar, which is commonly called orthoclase feldspar. It would contain a percentage of quartz, a percentage of sodium-rich plastoclase feldspar. It would contain micas, and it would contain a small percentage of amphibole. So within granite, you would see five of these minerals, potassium feldspar, quartz, sodium-rich plastoclase feldspar, mica, and amphibole. If we look at basalt, which is a mafic composition, and we draw a line straight down from the middle of the mafic field, whatever minerals or whatever field the line straight down would cross, those are the minerals that you find in basalt. So we'd, be, we'd find a high percentage of calcium-rich plastoclase feldspar. We'd find a high percentage of proxene. And we would also find amphibole. Now, if this line was drawn a little more to the right, you'd see a variation in the minerals that would be found. So a little to the right or a little to the left, you'd see different uh, percentages of minerals found in that composition of rock. Another question that can be asked according or in relation to the igneous classification chart it is what minerals can be found in most all igneous rocks. So if we look at the classification chart, we see that the plasclase field extends from the far left of your chart over to the ultramafic field of your chart. So if we go from the far left, from the felsic field, all the way to the ultramafic field to the right, we'll see that plasclase feldspar is basically found in all igneous rocks. The amphibole field and the mica field also extend pretty much from the felsic region over to the, uh, the mafic region. So a lot of micas and amphiboles can also be found in a wide variety of igneous rocks. But plasclase feldspar would be the most common of all minerals found in all of these rocks. The third question that's commonly asked, it says, what minerals would you never find in a felsic igneous rock? So if we look at the felsic field, the felsic field is located on the left side of your diagram. So what minerals would never be found in a felsic field, that would be the minerals proxene and olivine. These two minerals are strictly related to the mafic field, and they would never be found in the felsic field of igneous rocks. In the other comparison, if we look at mafic, if you draw a line straight down from the mafic field,
we notice that minerals that are never found in the mafic area, which is the area here to the right, would be potassium feldspar and quartz. These two fields do not cross underneath the mafic region. Therefore, you would never find potassium feldspar and quartz in mafic igneous rocks. Let's look at some examples from past public exams. Example number one it says, using the diagram below, answer the following questions. Question one, what is the volcanic equivalent of a rock that has 55% plagioclase feldspar, 25% hornblende, and 20% proxy? So we look at the three different fields we have. 55% uh, plagioclase feldspar would occupy approximately one half of the field. So it would be located somewhere within this region. Then we have 25% hornblende and 20% proxy. So we know that it's going to cross somewhere along the line here. So if we could draw a line straight down from this top region down to the bottom, we would notice that the plasticase feldspar would be approximately 55%. The hornblende would be approximately 25%, and the proxene would be approximately 20%. So therefore, this line here would represent the composition uh, outlined by the question that's being asked. So if we look above, we see two possible answers. We see diorite would have that composition, and we see andesite. So if we look over in our answers, the answer asks for the volcanic equivalent, which would consist of that composition. So the volcanic rock would be andesite. So our answer in this case would be A. Question two, it says, based on the diagram, which mineral is found in most igneous rocks? So if we look at our diagram, and we look at most igneous rocks, again, we look at which mineral field will be found in the widest variety of igneous rocks. And from the diagram, we can see that plagioclase feldspar is found in all igneous rocks. So our answer to the second question would also be A, plagioclase feldspar. Example two, it asks, what characteristic allows two of these rocks with the same mineral composition to have different names? So if we look at classification charts, let's go back to the diagram here. All felsic rocks, in this case granite and rhyolite, would consist of all of these minerals that are directly below. Gabbro and basalt would consist of all these minerals directly below. But the only difference, even though they have the same mineral composition, is they form in different environments. So if we go back and look at our question, the question reads, what characteristic allows two igneous rocks with the same mineral composition to have different names? So the same mineral composition and different names would be due to the fact that they form in different environments. Therefore, they would have different textures. So the answer to this question would be D. Next question, example number two, reads, which intrusive, extrusive pair of rocks have the same mineral composition? So again, if we go back and look at our mineral composition chart for a second, we're looking for pairs of igneous rocks which would have the same composition. So we see here granite and rhyolite would have the same mineral composition, whereas granite would be your intrusive rock, rhyolite extrusive, diorite and andesite, and also gabbro basalt. And if we look at ultramafic rocks, we see pritatite and kematite would have the same composition. So with that in mind, we can go back and revisit our question. It says, which intrusive, extrusive pair? So intrusive would be your plutonic rock. 
and extrusive would be a volcanic igneous rock. So if we look at the first choice, basalt and granite, or sorry, basalt and andesite, both are volcanic rocks, so that wouldn't satisfy what we're looking for. If we look for choice B, we have gabbro and basalt. Gabbro is plutonic, whereas basalt is volcanic, so that would be your intrusive, this would be your extrusive, and these two are both made up of the same composition. So your answer for this question will be B, gabbro and basalt. Your turn. Take the time to answer the following question. Explain why two igneous rocks can have the same mineral composition but have different rock names. Take the time to prepare your answer. The answer will follow on the following slide, so you can stop your recording now to prepare your answer. Let's look at the answer to the question. Explain why two igneous rocks can have the same mineral composition but have different rock names. If you look at our answer, it says the type of igneous rock not only depends on its mineral composition, but also on the environment in which the molten rock crystallized. The environment will determine the texture of the rock, which is another factor used to classify or name igneous rocks. Thus, two igneous rocks with the same mineral composition can have different textures and will have different rock names. So the answer to your question here would focus on uh, two igneous rocks with the same mineral composition. They can have different textures. And this is because they form in different environments. So if we look at our examples down below, our felsic examples include rhyolite, which is your volcanic rock, and granite, which is the intrusive equivalent. Rhyolite and granite would have the same composition, but rhyolite would be fine grain, whereas granite would be a coarse grain rock. And the same applies for intermediate composition and mafic composition. Basalt and gabbro had the same minerals, but basalt would form in a volcanic environment whereas gabbro would form in a plutonic environment, and which would result in basalt having a fine grain texture and gabbro having a coarse grain texture. Let's look at our summary. When we look at the classification of common igneous rocks, we classify igneous rocks according to composition and texture. Igneous rocks with the same composition can be found in one of three classifications. Either felsic, which you have your plutonic rock granite and your volcanic rock rhyolite. Intermediate, where you have your plutonic rock diorite and your andesite in the volcanic environment. Mafic composition, where you have gabbro forming in a plutonic environment and basalt forming in a volcanic environment. So if we look at the same composition, these rocks, located to the right, the pairs, granite and rhyolite, they have the exact same minerals, but different textures. Intermediate composition, diorite and andesite have the exact same minerals, but different textures. And mafic composition, gabbro and basalt, would have the exact same minerals, but different composition. But when we look at texture, we can also see that some of these rocks basically have the same textures, but they have different mineral compositions. So if we look at a fine grain igneous rock, which basically forms in volcanic environments, all of these rocks, rhyolite, andesite, and basalt, form onto your surface, therefore would have a fine crystalline texture. In comparison, coarse grain igneous rocks form in plutonic environments. So granite, diorite, and gabbro all form deep beneath the surface and therefore would have a coarse texture. So that is the main difference according to our classification chart. 
we can classify them according to their composition, which some rocks have the same composition, felsic, intermediate, and mafic. Or we can also classify it according to texture, where different igneous rocks have the exact same texture. Okay, some will be fine grain texture, which form on the surface of the earth, and others would have a coarse grain texture, which form deep beneath the surface of the earth. 